If you or a loved one is considering LASIK eye surgery, there are six things, at least six things, that you need to know and understand about the economics of the LASIK business. And make no mistake, it is first and foremost a business and secondarily a medical procedure. And the first thing you need to know is, even though you may be thinking, I really want to do this now because it's gotten so cheap, um, that low prices create bad medicine. You know, the prices have more than fallen in half in the last 10 years, but the overhead that the doctors have to pay for their staff, their equipment, their building, their own salaries has not gone down. In fact, it's gone up. That means they have to do twice or more than twice as many procedures to cover that overhead. And what that does is it puts more pressure on them to do more procedures. Um, and as the uh, obvious perfect candidates in their eyes get taken care of, they're more and more likely to look at people like me who have significant contraindications and somehow in their own minds justify doing the surgery and charging the four or five thousand dollars anyway. And that leads me to the second thing that you really have to understand and that is that your LASIK surgeon in all probability has a serious conflict of interest in diagnosing your candidacy for LASIK eye surgery. They get paid for doing surgery. They do not get paid for doing free consultations that result in sending you home. And that is a real conflict of interest. It brings to mind a cartoon I saw recently. Surgeon is sitting there talking to a patient who's on the exam table and the patient necktie is undone and the surgeon is saying, there's really nothing wrong with you, but I think a little surgery would make both of us feel better. And that is the sort of conflict of interest, even if it's unacknowledged, even if they don't even recognize it, that it takes a very strong person. It takes an incredible strength of character, especially when you got bills to pay, you got staff who are waiting on a paycheck, you got the, the bill coming due for that big laser equipment. It takes incredibly strong character to turn away somebody who's maybe a marginal candidate, but can, who, who can help you make that next payment. The third thing you need to understand about the economics of, of LASIK is that in order to create the perception that this is a very safe procedure and in, quarter, in order to generate demand that helps them pay the bills, many, too many LASIK surgeons have resorted to deceptive and downright fraudulent advertising. You see it in billboards, you see it in magazine ads, you see it in the things that they say on radio, on TV. Um, whenever they say they've achieved a 99%, they say satisfaction rate because they don't know what their success rate is, um, that's deceptive. And what that does is it creates what economists call caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. It is strictly up to you because there is no independent source telling you who's good, who's not good, who's competent, who's incompetent, who's telling you the truth, who's lying to you because they want to get into your pocket. And the fourth thing you need to know is that if things go wrong, as they did in my case and as they do in thousands of others, um, your surgeon has very little economic incentive to follow up on you. When I walked out of the Wolf Eye Clinic after my last prepaid visit, which they were obligated by contract to give me, a door closed behind me and at that point they completely ignored, completely abandoned me. I had to seek care finally from other sources. I've been to the University Strabismus Clinic, the Cornea Clinic. I'm seeing three different optometrists, um, some of whom help me, and, and some of the problems I have simply are beyond help. But the Wolf Eye Clinic completely slammed the door, completely abandoned me. Why? They don't make money with nickel and dime clinic visits on people with problems, frustrating problems that they can't fix. They make their money cutting open the eyes not patching the damage that's been done. And that gets me to the sixth thing that you really, fifth thing I think that you really need to understand, and that is that if things go wrong, you probably have no recourse. Um, the likelihood of your being able to file a successful lawsuit against an eye clinic is marginal at best. They really, really have to screw it up. Um, they may settle out of court. Uh, somebody uh, who had a, uh, an, uh, an experience very similar to mine, dishonest diagnosis, botched surgical procedure, completely abandoned on follow-up, did, actually within weeks of my experience, did file a lawsuit against the Wolf Eye Clinic. Um, I believe that was settled out of court. 
So that person, if I'm right, and that was settled out of court, I can't. They won't tell me. Um, I have a copy of the lawsuit. It is posted on this website. You should read it before you have surgery yourself. Um, but uh, it's it's pretty rare. And one of the reasons it's pretty rare that people are successful uh, is that you c you'll almost never get an eye surgeon to testify on your behalf, no matter how egregious um, your injury has been. It really has to be terribly bad for you to win. And the last thing you have to understand about the economics of LASIK is if it goes wrong, it could be something that costs you a whole lot more money than the 4000 or 5000 or heaven forbid you went to one of these cut rate places in four or five hundred dollars. I have spent more money on eyeglasses in the five years since I had LASIK than I did in the previous 45 years of my life. I have, uh, even now, I have separate glasses for reading, for working at a computer, for driving, day driving, night driving. I have given away dozens of pairs of glasses because as my eyes recuperate as the double vision gets worse. I don't need, I can't wear those glasses anymore, so I have to give them away. I have spent literally thousands of dollars on eye drops, on clinic visits, on, um, soon I will be spending a lot more on what I hope scleral contact lenses, which I hope will help me with this chronic eye pain and, and chronic dry eye disease caused by LASIK that I, that I have now. Um, this has been the most expensive not only the worst mistake I've ever made, but probably the most expensive mistake I've ever made. So you really need to be a, a, an amateur economist before you or your loved one goes in and lets them cut on your eyes uh, because it could end up being a whole lot more expensive than just the check you're going to write to the LASIK surgeon.